two sides of a parallelogram are 24 feet and 30 feet. The measure of the angle between these sides is 57 degrees. Find the area of the parallelogram to the nearest square foot. Okay, so let's draw a picture. So we want to draw a parallelogram. And I don't know if this is exactly what it would look like, but this is an approximation. So we'll say this is 30, and then this is 30. So remember, opposite side parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides that are also equal, right? So 30 and 30, and they're parallel to each other. And then these sides are parallel to each other, and they are 24. And how do you find the area of a parallelogram? in general, the area of a parallelogram is kind of like the area of a rectangle. It's the base times the height. But it's easier with a rectangle because one of the sides represents the base and the other represents the height. With a parallelogram that's not the case. 30 represents the base but 24 is not the height because it's slanted. The height is actually a perpendicular line that we might draw say from here that would be the height so I'll call that H so how do we find that height well really we have to dig a little more into this triangle here and we can use some trigonometry to uh, to determine exactly what that height is we know, so far we've used the 24 feet, we've used the 30 feet, but we haven't used the idea that the angle between these sides is 57 degrees. So where is that? Is this angle 57 degrees or is this angle 57 degrees? Well, the one up here is obtuse. So it can't be that. That angle has to be at least 90 degrees. The one down here is acute. So this is the angle that's 57 degrees. And it's getting a little small, so I'm going to separate that triangle out so we can see it a little better, make it a little bigger. Hopefully I can make this work. Not a perfect triangle, but it'll do. Okay, so this is 57 degrees. And we know this slanted angle going up is 24. And we know this is a right angle. And we're interested in finding out what this height is. We don't actually know what this length is here, right? Because the whole base is 30. But we don't know how much of that forms the bottom of this triangle. And we don't need to. What we're really after is this height. So let's go ahead and use our trigonometry to uh, find out what it is. So if this is the angle that we know, and we're after the height, which trig do we want to use? Well, it's SOHCAHTOA, right? So, and we've done this in a few different problems, so hopefully you're catching on. SOHCAHTOA we have this angle we want the opposite we also know the hy the hypotenuse so opposite and hypotenuse right so we're going to use the sine so sine of the angle of 57 equals opposite over hypotenuse which is h that's what we're after over 24 so we can solve this for h, right? Multiply by 24 on both sides. I'll show that as well. So if we multiply by 24 on both sides, we get 24 times sine of 57. And I put that into my calculator, and I got 20.128. Now if they ask you for the answer to the nearest square foot, that means we're going to be rounding to the nearest whole number. So you really don't have to carry too many decimals. You could probably get away with carrying it out to the hundredth place. But I like to be um, as accurate as possible, so I carry three decimals and then round off at the end. But you could carry more if you really want to be um, absolutely positive. But you could probably get away with carrying less in this case. Usually, whatever they want, if they want it to the nearest whole number, you should carry at least two more. So in this case, you might put 20.13, and you'll probably be all right. Okay, so we have H. So we're ready to find the area of a parallelogram. Area is base times height. We have the height. We know the base is 30, so we're almost done. Let's just finish off. Area of a parallelogram equals 30 times 
20.128. And if you multiply that out and round it to the nearest whole number, you will get 604 feet squared. And that's your answer. Now, you might be wondering, at the beginning when we first drew our parallelogram, we put 30 on the base and we put 24 here, but how did we know to draw the parallelogram that way? Couldn't we have done it the other way around, where the base was actually smaller? Suppose we had drawn it like this. Maybe make the base smaller. And then maybe it's a little bit of a taller parallelogram. And this could be the 24. And this could be the 30. Well, it turns out that if that's the case, we actually get the same answer. And you can kind of see how the trade-off works. And I may have drawn this a little longer than necessary here, but if it if the triangle was I'm sorry, if the parallelogram was less wide but it was taller, maybe that would compensate for the area. And really, if you visualize it, this parallelogram is like taking the first parallelogram and just turning it 90 degrees. If I had drawn them with uh, you know exactly the right dimensions, although I'm sure they're not perfect. And if you if you're still not sure, you can prove it to yourself with the math. So if you had drawn it this way, let's proceed with the trigonometry part of the problem and see that the answer comes out exactly the same. The height that we'd be interested in now is h. The 57 would still be here because it has to be the acute angle again. It can't be the obtuse angle. And we can then again separate that triangle out again, except now the hypotenuse, instead of being 24, is going to be 30 for working with this triangle. So let's write down what the trig would look like. Now h is going to be 30 times sine 57, whereas before it was 24 sine 57. So the height is actually going to be more. That makes sense. It's a taller parallelogram, so it's going to have a bigger height. If you put that in your calculator, you'll get 25.16. And then when you go to find the area of, of the parallelogram, you'll get base times height. But now what's the base? The base is now only 24 instead of 30. So it's 24 times 25.16. And lo and behold, when you multiply that out, it will still round to 604 feet squared. So don't get hung up at the beginning on figuring out what's the right way to draw it. It turns out both ways are right. And as I'll often say, as long as you do legitimate mathematical operations, there are many pathways to the right answer. And this problem is a perfect illustration of that.